Hello and welcome to the next video. You'll notice that I have uh, completely switched computers. Um, <laughs> that is mostly because... Uh, oh, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> that is mostly because uh, some of the stuff that I want to show involves updating Foundry to the latest version and, and installing mods and a bunch of other funky chunky stuff. Um, so instead, I'm just going to use the, the one that I have actively running instead of my work computer one. Um, so. You will see down here, this one has a lot more random bunch of modules. Uh, D&D Beyond Importer is super cool because it lets you do this number. You gotta go, there's good old Gunther, hit the D&D Beyond logo, slap in the URL, scroll down, start import, and bam. And then if you want, you can update D&D Beyond from Foundry, which is awesome. Um, this whole video, by the way, is just gonna be me gushing about modules and the way Foundry has completely changed how I end up playing games, uh, at least virtually. We, we tried it in a hybrid setting for this and it worked out well to use this as like maps and, and for me as a GM to keep track of like creatures. With, with this it's super easy to be able to like keep track of like you know, 30 creatures super easily and be able to do things normally. Um, so you saw this earlier with no tokens in it. Um, and uh, here, let me go to a different floor. It's uh, not that floor. <laughs> so like and to do a combat like really fast so we'll end this combat like you select and drag uh, all the tokens that you want involved in the combat right click set battle state and your players can either roll initiative on their character sheet or they can go to the combat tab and hit this and what you can do is is uh there's a lovely roll npcs and then it'll automatically roll all of and it, it lets you know what their uh their roles were um and the 0 .08 and 0 .19 are deck scores for breaking ties. And then it automatically sorts them. And so, like, you know, as they roll, they're like, da 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 ba ba da And then begin combat. And then you can cycle through. Oh, yeah, how do big thing go? <laughs> and then it'll tell you what round number you're on, which is kind of useful. Um, and it, it lets you know whose current turn it is actively. You don't have to, like, click through if you don't want to. Um, it's just something that you can do to, to help out with. Um... But that's, uh, that's how to do the lovely little combat thing. Uh, I didn't really get to show you that too much. Uh, the other thing that I do want to kind of showcase out here is uh, the MIDI quality of life mod, which is right here, MIDI QOL. So if you go to configure settings, module settings, automated animations, beyond importer, FX master, scene packer midi quality of life this stuff starts looking like a skyrim mod pack where you just have so many mods upon mods it's hard to tell what's going on um and you're gonna go to midi quality of life configuration and for the gm auto roll attack is checked uh skip resource dialogue you know to consume like a spell or you know, keeps track of that stuff auto roll damage if the attack hits and then remove track card buttons after roll attack and damage gm details after hiding so you have a whole bunch of settings for the gm and you can have those be different for the player if you want them to have to roll things or do things differently. And it lets you know uh, lovely workflow. So check, see, all see results. Uh, that's a thing that you want to make sure is on if you want to automatically check. You can also say only GMCs. I don't know how much you want to keep stuff from your players and all that good fun. Um, but, you know, eh. Um, there's certain things that have player reactions that can toggle up like i know uh deflect missiles for a monk will toggle if someone's getting shot at from a bow or a ranged weapon it'll toggle the player to be like hey do you want to use deflect missiles just so you don't forget it um which is kind of cool um auto check saves so this is really cool um this is something that, that helps if you have like Let's say Trev over here just chucks a fireball, right? He's like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm chucking a fireball. Don't consume the spell slot. Place the measured template. Cast the spell. And he just goes, hey -ah! <laughs> And then roll the damage. Hey -ah! And then if you look over here, it will, it will tell you, uh, it'll select everyone automatically, which is an important distinction, and it will automatically roll all of their deck save, and it'll tell you what the die roll was and what their bonus was if you scroll over it. You can have this set with, uh, and look, some of them, she rolled with advantage because she has advantage on spell saving throws. Automatically considers all of that. 
automatically rolls all of that, and I don't know if you caught it, but it automatically deducted their health, which I will definitely need to make sure it goes back up for our player characters because this is an active game. <laughs> um, so that's MIDI quality of life. Uh, you can do that on a lesser extent if you're like, hey, I just want someone to just do an attack to someone or whatever. Uh, you can have, we'll have, uh, close this. We'll get Jim Renegade over here targeting Big Ben. Boop. And that's the one thing with MIDI quality of life. You have to make sure you're targeted on something. And he has, uh, we'll do a rapier. Rolls it in chat. And the way the, oh, oh so it rolled 16 and that misses Big Ben. Big Ben has an AC of 17. So it won't toggle to roll for damage or anything. But, you know, if Jim, you know, gets frustrated and he swings again <laughs> and hits, it'll do six more damage to Big Ben. Um, <laughs> so that's MIDI quality of life. It's very helpful with running spell areas uh, for certain things. Um, but if you want to roll your dice in person, or I don't know, again, the, the details, but you can turn any of these settings on and off under configure settings module settings midi quality of life um but yeah yeah uh, that's that's one thing that's super neat uh, i do like having the the auto check to see if it hits and then the saving throw you can do all c result only all c result plus the save and only gm sees you can have it display the saving throw dc the saving throw multiplier it will automatically half the damage unless otherwise specified which is pretty rad uh it you can have it prompt to do it. It can be like, hey, a whispered chat message will, will work. It's like, hey, let me roll that for you is the is another mod that it can check. Um, but yeah, yeah, and damage automatically apply and also apply immunities plus physical. So that'll help if you have characters who have like damage resistance. It should if everything's put in correctly with the items because if you look in the inventory, it'll edit an item details it'll tell you like 1d6 slashing plus at mod so it's slashing damage and it lets you know there and it'll check to see if you go over to attributes it's like damage immunities languages damage resistances like it'll it'll automatically apply those as necessary which is just oh so rad that's why i always recommend midi quality of life it's it just helps being a gm really nicely the other ones that i use on here are bellows which is the the uh, youtube playlist thing where you basically can import a youtube playlist and you follow that and you, you use a youtube playlist i have had issues with it double running audio with that so sometimes you have to stop all the audio and then restart it but um been pretty good automated animations is a fun one with certain spells uh and certain basic attacks uh this this module is pretty cool uh one that i know that it works on let's see if we can get it to to show who uh is cure light wounds uh and a few other like level one spells i think healing word is another one but don't consume the spell slot so it was like whoosh, does a little animation um they have a patreon that has like a very extensive library of different animations and it's one of those i think if you go once you can buy them all and get it pretty easily and those are easy to set up and configure as well um what else do i use fx master which is required for the automated animations but the big reason why i have fx master is it lets you do different weather effects so let's say it's a snowstorm now now everyone sees a snowstorm <laughs> um or, you know, like, stars. And I think you can layer them if you want to go, like, absolutely crazy and just really make people's computers cry a little. Um, <laughs> but you can add as few or as many as you want, and they each have their own little little settings bits to add more intensity. And you can even, like, change colors on them and stuff. So that's that's good for, for certain things. There's the regular special effects, which I think you can add more of these. Uh, these are... I think there's a way to get more folders. I haven't really tinkered around with it, but uh, but you can you can like which bolt like bzz, <laughs> yeah, bzz, uh, smoke bomb. Um, but those are just more things that you can you know, add in and do things. So this is something that I want to mess around with at some point. Uh, sequencer. Um, sequencer basically will allow you to run a sequence of events. So like you load into a map and then a guy takes two steps forward the game's paused but then the you know, like dialogue happens and he'll paste the message in the chat or something 
I haven't had a ch an opportunity to really use that at all, but between that and a few other modules, it's almost like you can just make your own little D&D &D MMO, which is like, getting pretty ridiculous. Um, and then we of course plutonium, socket lib is required for MIDI quality of life, and then this is maps, and this is something that helps maps get placed, or like place things in them, I think. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's a very quick overview of the modules that I use actively. Most of these are content maps, you can see it's like free map bundle maps, <laughs> uh, but the main ones, like I said, MIDI quality of life, I wouldn't leave it, like, Foundry without it, D&D uh, &D Beyond Importer. This lets you import, you know, everyone's D&D Beyond stuff, and it feels a lot less like piracy than Plutonium does. Um, Plutonium, which you know, I've already gone over that ex pretty extensively. Um, but yeah, that's that's all there is to that part of things. And then you just, you know, you can pause and unpause as you, as your heart's content. You can uh, do, again. There's there's just so many little things that. Uh, that Foundry does, and that's the other thing, it's like whenever you use things, it shows you the whole thing in here, um, which is nice. Um, and this little hotbar is super useful, especially if you're a GM and you have like three monsters that use slam attack, because you just have to select a token, select the target, and then now you're slamming. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, this is, sorry, this is a little, a little lengthy, I'm just mostly gushing about all of the different modules. There's another mod uh, called Mook AI. Um, and what that does is really cool is if you have like if you like to run big battles or whatever It's like you got like 50 goblins and some some orcs and some like chieftain guy um, You can set up the goblins or whoever you want to be a quote-unquote mook and uh, What that does is on a combat turn when it comes around to them They'll use their mook AI which will look at their movement speed and look at its perception if it can see an enemy and get to it or Make an attack on that enemy. It will move around trying to locate an enemy if it does It will try to make an attack targeting that enemy which triggers MIDI quality of life and Then you know like it'll pretty much just keep doing that like it'll run around trying to find enemies and just attacking them like very very simplistic mostly just for monsters that are like run around slap with club they don't really have too many like special abilities that you have to worry about um so yeah yeah that's another thing like i said i haven't I haven't gotten a chance to test that out at all um but that sounds like it could be fun and again uh let me let me turn to set up here and uh like just this is the the, the newer version of foundry um and look, just look at how many packages there are there's over a thousand 101 premium content which means it's a uh, own or you have to purchase it uh, exclusive content and then just all of these other categories of stuff so many things and some of them are like specific to a game system or a specific bug but most of them are just like really neat ideas and content packs which i think is the most except for tools and controls are typically like homebrew stuff maps audio like just so many fun little bits of resources looks like a lot of these are you gotta buy some of them but there are free ones you can do uh i think you can filter no i guess you can't you can only filter uninstalled and installed anywho uh i hope this stuff was helpful um foundry's incredible it's been out i guess what almost two years now i think it came out march in 2020 and uh it's the way you buy it it's uh it's a one license so it's like I think it's fifty dollars is the base, but I think holiday time they they go down to forty dollars, and then you have it forever. You can run this as long as you want, um, and you can, like I said, run it locally, run it on a cloud server. I absolutely adore it. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll more than happily try to to help you set something up. But that's the general gist of it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> thanks for listening to me ramble. <laughs> See you around. Bye-bye.